Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. Today we have some interesting news coming from the folks at Autodesk. Maya 2022 has now finally been announced and uh, this has been long awaited. Now, you might be asking why 2022? So the folks at Autodesk have actually just skipped 2021 owing to the fact that 3D Studio Max is 2022, Motion Builder is 2022 and also the other, you know, media tool sets that they've also created or, you know, the other tools they've created are all 2022. So Maya 2022 actually compensates for everything that you kind of missed in the version 2021 that never came out so the very first update that is here which is actually massive and a huge one and uh, this is pretty nice it is the USD so the USD from the folks at Pixar is now here the open source universal scene description now exists seamlessly directly in Maya as it is fully integrated so just in case you're working in VFX or maybe you're working with heavy files and you're wondering how can I move this directly in Maya do my animation work with keyframes work non-destructively with thousands and thousands of meshes right now you can actually do all of this directly in Maya Maya now comes with a lightning speed for data sets that you can actually take advantage of and uh, this is just one of those things there's a seamless import and export for data sets that is also available when you're working with USD and for those who like to edit and also load massive USD data set this is now super easy outliner experience has now been tailored to USD so in case you're working with the outliner you can now now simply play with the USD structure directly with the outliner. This is something that most apps out there don't even have an inclination that can be possible, but it's very easy to see that this now exists in Maya. Despite that, there is also support for in-memory USD stages. So just in case, you know, you want to play with uh, the viewport, the outliner, attribute editor, manipulator, snapping, these things are now very common. There is also a new USD layer editor that you can manipulate and play with intuitively, which can help you create, manage, and also view your USD stages in different complex layer stacks. And on top of all of this, for those who like to get the plugin for the Maya USD, you can actually go over to the link in the description that will take you over to the GitHub where you can get this. So you can get this, you can customize it and play with it how you want. While we talk about things that you can get and play with, Python 3 is now fully supported and that uh, is heavily right here in Maya. So across every platform, Python 3 is now the new default that you can work with in Maya. And this is uh, going to be very, very interesting for developers and plugin guys that are working in Maya, you know, you're creating contents for Maya, this is definitely going to be useful for you. So it doesn't matter whether you're working with Linux, Mac, or even Windows, you will be able to work with Python 3. And if you're a huge fan of Python 2 and you still want to use this with Maya and you're working with both Windows and Linux, then you can actually set your Python 2 mode directly within the environment variable. And uh, this is for the Windows guys. And for the Linux guys, you can actually set this one within the command line flag. Now with that said, let's talk about the powerful animation tools that are now available in Maya 2022. Maya 2022 does come with a brand new ghosting editor. Of course, there was a couple of ghosting editors before, but this one is pretty new and uh, it comes with its own dedicated window. So what this allows you to do is for you to easily and quickly see animations spacing over time and it will also allow you to pinpoint and make edits as you proceed so just in case you know you want to make some changes to your poses or changes to you know uh your characters or the animation then this is also something that would be pretty cool there's also a number of improvements that you get to find across these animation tools which include your timeline editor as there's now a new inclusion and support for caching playbacks so just in case you know you're into simulation and dynamics yep this is definitely something that has been heavily heavily improved and for me i do think that those working with vfx stuff would definitely find this one very interesting as we also have a new set of updates within the graph editor so within the graph editor there is a new peak removal filter now what this does is it helps you clean up unwanted spikes and also peaks within your animation curve. And it is pretty interesting to see that this one looks very, very nice. Of course, this looks very similar to what you could get in Motion Builder, but this one seems to have more cooler things, you know, that works for it. And uh, the new smoothing filter actually gives you more control when you want to blow things out, depending on the kind of things that you're working on. And at the same time, it does have the preserve tangent option that you can use. So just in case you're working with motion capture data or you're working with keyframe data, I guess this new feature would definitely make it worth your while. And while we speak about animation, we cannot move forward than talking about rigging as there is also a huge update to the rigging 
plugin system. So there's a brand new component tag, which makes a lot of sense. And this component tag actually allows you to store a set of components that exist on your geometry directly on your shape node. Now, what this does in the other hand is you can use these with a couple of the formers that are now here. So just in case maybe you're doing some sort of rigging and you want to reference those component tags, of course you can. And you can also do a couple of mathematics with that as you can add and also you can deduct some stuff. While we talk about this, there is also a pretty cool deformer falloff that is now here. Now the deformer falloff actually provides and gives you a new way of defining your deformation. So unlike traditional deformers where you, you know, waiting gets to be performed one way or the other, right here, the falloffs can actually be shared across different topology. So you can also call on the component tag at several points in time and use them. And you can also drive various parts of your model by simply using the component tag when you're working with any of the given deformers. So things like your clusters, your blend shape, your proximity wrap, and also your tensions and so on and so forth, you can now make the most out of them by simply taking advantage of the deformer falloffs that now exist with Maya. Now moving forward, there is a solidified deformer which allows you to actually make several parts of your model look solid. So instead of having them deformed, you can also work alongside with the component tag to save those parts as solid sections of your model and reduce the amount of deformation that you have. There is also a brand new morph deformer that you can always use and so on and so forth. So I'm definitely gonna put a link in the description where you can check these things out. But with this said, there's also a couple of tools and a couple of updates that are here. Maya now supports VR, so you can actually create things in VR right now and import them directly in Maya. There is a create VR app that you need to actually work with this. So out of the box, Maya doesn't have that VR capability, but you can go over to the app store and get this and plug this alongside Maya. The minute you install this, you'll be able to get this directly within Maya's UI and uh, you can work with it. So you can fire up the create VR directly from Maya and this can easily help you draw, create, you know, sculpt and do some cool stuff. And you can actually have that seamless one by one kind of feature going back and forth between Maya and also the create VR. So with that said as well, there's also a couple of user requested updates that are here and uh, you might want to go through and check these ones out. That includes things like strokes and so on. And for me, I did find a new sort of thing here that makes a lot of sense. So we talked about this one one time where we were looking for ways that you can actually implement and get cooler and nicer stuff in Maya in terms of creating things like cables and all that. But now it's very interesting to see that we have that. I mean, we really have that. Now, instead of what we had before, which was like the wire tool, which is a great tool, by the way, which is no longer on the store, you can now create pipes and cables and actually sweep things across. And you can do this by simply using curves. And at the same time, you can also have profile shapes that you can use to control sizes and all that stuff. So for me, I think this is a huge win for those who would like to work with Maya as it is very interesting to see that we do have a feature like that. And while we talk about these features, there's also tons and tons of cool things that you might want to see. So for those who are also into animation and maybe you are into exporting characters out, there is a game versus count plugin that is also available. So you can now estimate the amount of vertices and you know, you can estimate how your assets directly in Maya would impact your games. And this would make you be able to know what and what not to export and also how to optimize your models before you export them to game engines like Unreal and also unity so these are very cool things and for those who are also excited about playing with Arnold, Arnold 6.2 is now here as it is set to be fast and also flexible in terms of rendering. For sure, we're going to go through layer hands on Maya 2022 and also talk about all of these things, do a simple walkthrough and a review of some of the tools that are available. And as well, those who like to also work with Bifrost, there is a huge update for Bifrost right here. So I'm going to put a link in the description where you can check out a full list, all right, a full list of Maya 2022's feature all of the known issues that have been fixed. So all of the problems that you had in Maya 2020, all of the ones that have been fixed, you can take a look at them, see how these things are working right now. And uh, these things are based off different categories and uh, different modules that exist in Maya. And for sure, there is also 
a known issue section where you can take a look at some of the issues that you might be facing with Maya 2022 and also a walkthrough around those. And uh, for me, I think this is proper documentation. So just in case you want to take a look at this, you can also go through and see these things for yourself. So for those who would like to grab Maya 2022, you can simply go over to autodesk.com where you can get Maya for free for 30 days. And of course you can use it. And if you're a student or you're an instructor, you can also, you know, get Maya 2022 for one year and you can always renew these as far as you're a student. And it's very interesting to see that these updates are here and I'm quite excited about it. So long time we waited for Autodesk to actually release something for Maya and this release is actually nice. And of course, there are a couple of things that I did expect to see with 2022, which are not here. And uh, they include things like MASH. There's no update for MASH. And uh, also, there is no update to PTEX. So I'm actually a huge fan of the PTEX texturing that exists in Maya. But there is still no update for that. And uh, there's still a couple of tiny little, you know, buttons and rivets that are not available right now. And uh, I do wish to see some of those updates come over to Maya. Tell me what you guys think about this in the comment section. And of course, if you like this video or you learned something from this, you can go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And if you're new here, it's going to be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on the notification so that you don't miss the next video or the next update. And I'd like to see you guys again with a tutorial update, free Friday, tutorial Tuesday, tips and tricks, things like this. Peace.